Okay, by the way, this looks incredibly weird holding it like this. And we genuinely had a professor who was one of the leading lawyers when it came to WTO law and quite senior in European Union law. Might not have a job in the UK anymore, but still. And every lecture at 9 a.m., he would stand there in front of the lecture hall with 300 people watching him going, well, Van Ginten Luce says, he's Belgian. Lower? Yes. Better? Okay. Well, then he was holding it wrong because he would always hold it right next to his face. Um, now, today's class, as discussed, the whole idea today is interaction with the bench. So, one by one, everyone knows what they're going to talk about. I have no doubt every one of you will want to talk about Ukraine in the Euro 2016, the stellar performance that was there. Or you can talk about England in the Euro 2016 and their stellar performance losing to the giants of Iceland. Um, the whole idea is you will stand behind the podium, there is your audience, and you will speak. If anyone has a burning desire to ask you a question, they're entitled to. Not at the start, you have at least one minute of free time to say whatever you wish. After one minute, you might get questions, just as a heads up. I don't know how many of you have done public speaking before. If you haven't, and this is your first time, then you're in for a big surprise. It's a fantastic experience. However, you will all get nervous. It is, the expression in English is you get butterflies in your stomach. You get that sinking feeling. It's natural. Don't think it is anything bad as a very, very senior UK judge used to say to us, it's absolutely fine to get nervous. So long as you don't completely collapse because of your nerves, that little bit of nerves makes you sharp. It makes your brain work that much faster, that much quicker. So when you're having a pause up here, and you will hopefully see the video at some point in the future to see your pace, you will speed up because moments take forever. A little pause will feel like you're standing there saying nothing for hours. But that's perfect, because it just means your brain is working so much more quickly. Anything that comes at you, anything you think about, just happens so much more quickly. Just pace yourself, calm, collected. At any point, if you have any doubt, just think of, of some mantra, I don't know, it, any of you have had army training, apparently snipers are told to keep telling to themselves, I am a stone, I am a rock, I cannot be moved, or something like that. I only know from a film. Um, so just keep yourself calm, collected, stand, and deliver your speech for two minutes. Best of luck. I don't know how we're going to do this. If I start asking for volunteers, I am sure no one will stand up. Or will they? So, we're going to go from the back row, the people who have been hiding away. Now, just for the sake of ease, <clears throat> let's see. Has anyone got a coin to decide whether we're going to start from the right side or the left side? Anyone got a coin? Okay, ladies before gents. Ladies, call it heads or tails, as the expression is. Which side of the coin? <laughs> Who won? <laughs> Who's speaking? Okay, then best of luck. Top right starts. No, la ladies first, always. I like it, the fact that there is always uh, no such thing as chivalry unless it, it doesn't help. <laughs> In which case, men go first. Uh, 
uh, good morning. My name is Ladislava Mitsai, and for the next few minutes, I want to take your attention on the issue of uh, three health and sweet, at the same time, benefits of dark chocolate. Because uh, dark chocolate is uh, not only junk food anymore, it also has its own health benefits. The first one is a healthier heart. Italian studies uh, proved, have, uh, have already proved that uh, every third we, uh, woman that was um, But, uh, that was uh, eating dark chocolate uh, during uh, the studies. Uh, it was a risk uh, to get a, a health uh, failure uh, less than other women that don't eat dark chocolate. Another health benefit is uh, happier kids. Another studies uh, in the Europe uh, have already proved that uh, the women that uh, during their pregnancy were eating dark chocolate, uh, they were, at first, they were more happy and happier, and then their babies also, when uh, they go to our world, yeah. <laughs> they were also more happy and were smiling. Are you saying we should just eat dark chocolate? Nothing else, just breakfast, lunch, dinner, dark chocolate. Yeah, I don't tell you eat just dark chocolate at all <laughs> and nothing. But I uh, know people that tell me, are you eating chocolate? It's not a healthy food. It can um, help you in your healthy way of lifestyle and etc. How long have you been working for Cadbury or any other chocolate provider? I. I'm guessing you work with one of the chocolate providers no. with this fantastic sales pitch. <laughs> no, no, I, w I wasn't working. Uh, just, I'm a keen on chocolate and that's why I'm telling you about this issue. Uh, because many people tell me how you can all the day, 20 hours a day, eating just chocolate, 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 chocolate. And this summer, Jessup School, it's really my struggling not to eat chocolate, <laughs> just not to be obsessed with this item. But we have in a uh, KMA yard uh, um, dark chocolate, so I push it to try it. It's really delicious. And uh, the last benefit, if you want to listen, that I <clears throat> able to explain to you. Um, is a diet. Maybe it's confusing you. How can chocolate help you to get a healthy body and to remain your healthy diet? Uh, our, if we speak about healthy diet, I'm not telling you to eat uh, chocolate every day by tones. A limit is a four chocolate by uh, bars uh, at a week. And you will be healthy. It proved by uh, different European studies that elements that have chocolate uh, affect very positively on your body. Uh, process that's stop sign. Okay, that's my last benefit. and. I will be pleasant if you enjoy <laughs> my Thank speech. You. Thank you for your attention. Any okay. comments from anyone? Enlightening. Particularly good with your structure. But if you say, I have three points to make, then we all know actually there's a third one coming up. So at the start, useful to say what Which? you're going to be saying. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, at least, pace was perfect. Um, and I'm sure the pauses you felt like were an eternity, but it was actually more than fine. Have a little conclusion, one last line at the end of it. 
Thank you for your attention, everyone. Um, but really good. Thank you. Next, Next up. <coughs> your Excellencies, uh, may it please the court, I will address the issue concerning the ratification by Ukraine's own statute of International Criminal Court. Uh, the issue before the court today is uh, will Ukraine, uh, whether or not uh, Ukraine will ratify uh, the Rome Statute. Uh, first of all, it is a general rule uh, that uh, developed states uh, ratify the Rome Statute, however, except uh, Russia and USA. But we may refer to the statements made by Secretary General of the United Nations Ban Ki-moon. Uh, in several speeches, uh, uh, he said that the Rome Statute it is a huge step forward in uh, fighting, um, uh, fighting crimes under international law. Uh, applying to the uh, Ukraine uh, in uh, the agreement about association with the European Union, uh, ratified by Verkhovna Rada, it is the parliament, of, the parliament of Ukraine, it is a statement that the Rome Statute should be ratified within uh, three years. So uh, to make conclusions, we may expect that uh, Rome Statute will be ratified uh, within three years or earlier. If I am of no further assistance, surely. Everyone else is entitled to ask questions as well, by the way. It's not just me. You had a choice of pick any hobby, any topic, and the most interesting thing for you is the Rome Statute, Agent. <laughs> uh, Your Excellency, uh, I think, uh, Referring to uh, the Joseph Summer School, I think that uh, the Rome Statute will be much more known for everyone than hobbies, only if someone may like, if it may please the court. If there are no further questions, thank you for your kind attention. Anyone with questions? Uh, if Ukraine fails to ratify the Rome Statute within three years. Sorry? If Ukraine fails to ratify the Rome Statute within three years? Your Excellency, uh, I think there will be some, of, uh, some kind of uh, political responsibility. However, it is not a statement about uh, some uh, legal responsibility in the agreement about association. So you're saying because of the impending membership of the EU, the Rome Statute will have to be ratified? Is that correct? Yes, Your Excellency. What if there is no EU? Given that the UK has already left, <laughs> the Dutch leaving and everyone else potentially leaving, as the joke goes, what if Ukraine turns up in 2025 and asks, is anyone here? Your Excellency, this uh, hard, questions, uh, hard, hard question referring to the uh, recent uh, news about uh, Brexit. So. Uh, I think the Rome Statute is a good thing anyway, uh, without EU or beyond it. Oh, no. <laughs> Why do you think that the Rome Statute is, uh, is not a good thing? We have a Britain here. <laughs> yeah. We're part of the Rome Statute. It's fine. We can agree yep. on that one. It's just the bloody Americans and the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And conclude? Um, if there are no further questions, Your Excellency, I ask your permission to be relieved and thank you for your kind attention. Well, aside from the fact that your topic is so egoistic and boring, <laughs> <laughs> but really good. Um, I'm not sure if there is much I can say about improving. You actually very much kept the time as well. Just be mindful of. Again, I, I keep coming back. You're very good at answering questions, but the structure, flag it. I cannot emphasize this enough to everyone. Flag your structures, guys. <coughs> um, if you have how many points, set it out. I have two points to make with regards to the road path. Yada, 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 yada. But that's it. Nice done. Thank you. One recommendation. Everyone. After everything is done, go back and read, sorry, read, look at the videos. You will see little things that you do. I don't want to comment on every little hand gesture and every little side step or anything that you do. 
Um, but have a look. You will be surprised how many little annoying things you do that, that you never realize yourselves. But, Thank well you. done. Next. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yevgeny Senchenko. And in two minutes, I'm going to try to point out, to point out the weak points of the law in general and uh, the American judicial system of the 20th century in particular on the example of uh, the Miranda case. So, uh, just a little summary of the facts. Um, on, uh, in 1963, Ernesto Miranda was arrested by the Phoenix police and he was accused of kidnapping and uh, uh, raping an 18-year-old girl. And here's the interesting fact happened. One of the most famous American lawyers, no one, no one knows the reason actually, he decided to, took this case, to take this case. And uh, actually at the first instant court, they lost, and uh, Miranda was sentenced to 30 years of imprisonment. But uh, his lawyer uh, filed an appeal, and he said that Miranda was not informed about his rights during the uh, process of arresting him. Therefore, uh, the decision of the first instant court must be quashed. Must be quashed. And the Court of Appeal quashed the decision of the first instant court. But according to the American, according to the United States Constitution, no one can be subject to a trial on one case more than once. So as a result, Miranda was released from prison. And it was the fact when the law was uh, inequitable. So, you know, in the 21st century, uh, the law has been improved a lot. And what we know now is Miranda warnings. When, when everybody is under the arrest, they should be notified about their rights and the duties of the police in order to avoid such situations. So, uh, yes. Do you think Miranda should have been released? Um, there was dissenting opinions of the Supreme Court uh, judges. Different question. Do you think Miranda should have been released? Um, actually, uh, I think yes. Because uh, the law uh, has to apply to everyone equally. So you're in support of rape? No, 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 no. I'm not in support of rape. Uh, I'm in support of justice. But uh, is justice the law? Um, it's a philosophical question. Uh, uh, what I want to point out is that uh, the law uh, has always to be up to date. So, and it was a problem of the 20th century in the American history. So, um, unless you have any question, thank you for your attention. You have a fantastic way of grabbing attention. So that is probably your biggest weapon. When you talk, people will listen. But be careful with your movements. You also have a habit of just swaying side to side. It can be, if you were doing it for 20 minutes, at some point I would have been tempted to just say, Agent, just, just stand straight. I'm, I'm, I'm getting dizzy just watching you sway back and forth. Um, and be careful about the arms. When you have a pause, Better to be silent than to have a noise. Uh, it's one of those common things that everyone does. Everyone just goes, um, well, the way it should be is um, pause, silence, rather than noise. But very well done. Hi, my name is Anne. And I will talk about synchronized swimming as I was practicing for 10 years. 
So in my speech I'll cover two points. First is the general information about synchronized swimming and the second is actually about our Ukrainian national team. So the synchronized swimming is when a team consists from 8 to 12 women as women and try not to die because of the dehydration. So it's generally like a ballot in water. It's very hard for us to do it, but it's very pleasant for you to see it. Generally, we do many lifts. They are high, like shelters and other things. They are very beautiful. And also, personally, I always wanted to do this, but I'm too high for this. As for our national team, I would say that we are now the second in the Europe and I hope that we will be sought in the Olympic Games as our team has firstly ever qualified in the team to the Olympic Games that will be in Rio. So what is important for me is to say that it's really one of the best teams that we have now in normal Olympic Games and we have heard nothing about them and we hear just about our footballists or someone else. But our team is really very well. well. Uh, they all are from like they all they all are training in Kharkiv, but there are some people from my team with which I was standing and doing numbers when I was practicing synchronized swimming. As for you, it's very interesting to watch it maybe on a New Year's cooperatives as we always do this with dolphins and other meanings, maybe different fairy tales. And it's really very beautiful and exciting to watch, especially the numbers with candles as they are in the dark and they are really very romantic. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. My first question is, you jumped into the middle of that. I take it that you're a synchronized swimmer and you swim for the national Ukrainian team. No, 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 no. You're not? No, I swim from the Donetsk <laughs> team and I'm not proficient enough to qualify to Ukrainian national team. It's very hard, only 10 persons. But you do like to? No. It's uh, like, uh, from if I, will, if I wanted to qualify, I won't study at all because it takes all the time for the trainings to train in a day from 8 to 10 and then from 4 to uh, 8, or 8 p.m. And it's uh, like a normal training, six days a week. And when we have training sessions before the competitions, it's two weeks when you are always in the swimming pool, no school, no learning. And then my teachers was arguing me that when I actually end up this. And for me, the learning is most, was always most important than swimming. It was always, maybe if I want to qualify, I want to study law in my university. So as far as I got it, it's hard to do, it's uncomfortable, and not many people watch it. So why should we do it? No, many people watch it uh, abroad especially when we are working abroad with our shows. It's hard to do because you can't breathe under the water actually. And in the competitions, <laughs> you do all the numbers with your legs above the water and your head under the water. And therefore it's very hard, for, no, personally for me, the, most, the hardest part is what not to breathe for a long time. But in general, it's very exciting and it's similar to the Jessup maybe team. As always, it's always the team who wins the competitions and you're really in a good team and I have a, had a good team. You're like a family, you always support each other, especially when you train, train a coach is angry and you are supporting each other, saying no, 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 we will do it. Conclusion, finishing. Um, so watching the rest women is very interesting. <laughs>
Is this the cameraman's instructions? <laughs> God, this is embarrassing. Um, <laughs> you're very also good at giving a direct answer. Um, something I forgot to mention to your predecessor. Um, but, your eyes. You had two places you looked. Me, and whatever is up in that corner. I don't think anyone else was, was ever paid any attention. Even now, just staring at me. Just scan the room, look at everyone. There are people who exist. So yeah, that's the bits you can improve on, but good energy. So good morning, uh, my excellences, your excellences. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Your Excellences and Madam Presidents. Uh, so today I'm going to tell you a story based on the issue that it's very good to go out from your comfort zone. So um, this spring I took part in one competition which was held in Lviv. And I had many first times there. Uh, firstly, I was traveling by train. And uh, this wasn't just a good train with uh, lots of comfortable things that was just a third-class sleeper, if you know, it's called uh, uh, Platzkart. <laughs> and I have never traveling by, uh, in, in such a way. And uh, I didn't have a normal like bed inside the, the room. I had the bokavushka, if you know. So uh, it was quite uh, scary for me because I didn't know that I, people actually can sleep on this thing. And uh, the funny thing was that I was with my friend and she was in another like uh, train or something. So she decided to come and we were both sleeping on this uh, bakavushka. Um, secondly, uh, when we got to Lviv, we stayed in a hostel. I have never stayed in a hostel, so that was also a great experience. I have never thought that I would wait like two hours for shower. There were like 30 girls and three showers, so yeah. And the third thing which I wanted to tell you is that when we got to the uh, when we got uh, outside, we stayed a night in the tent, and it wasn't just a simple tent; it was a tent for 75 persons, and the temperature was like minus six at night, and I thought I would die. But we got all together like uh, microbes or something, like, and we started to warm each other. That was that was unforgettable experience. Yes, please. Can you please keep it PG thirteen? The seventy people all huddled together in ten sounds. Sounds quite dubious. <laughs> <clears throat> so, what's the question? My question is. Um, <clears throat> What exactly did you do to warm up with these other 75 people? Oh, <laughs> we were like, uh, uh, we were like uh, trying to get all together. We we're like breathing under our, uh, how it's called, a sleeping, sleeping back. Ba back. Oh, that was also my first time in the sleeping in this sleeping thing. Um, so yeah, you can see that I really went out from my comfort zone. And I quite like this experience because it reminded me of a summer camp, but I also have never been to summer camp. <laughs> so, yes. Thank you. What Any questions? What was your first emotions when you entered the blitz I want to go home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Are you going, uh, are you going to uh, travel somewhere else by postcards? You know, first time when I was going there, that was really scary and uncomfortable. But next time, when I was going back home, I didn't sleep in the tent because it was freaking cold. So I was very excited to see again this third class sleeper. And it was like paradise. I slept like I was dead. I, I, yeah. That was great. I'm going to ask a question. This is the first time you did something that wasn't ideal. To ask the question again, would you do it again? Not, not did you enjoy it the second time, would you do it the ex again? Would you go into Platz Cup again? Honestly, I did. I, I would do, do this because I had a great company and um, it really warmed me up. I, I don't know, I, I think 
when I'm gonna get old, I think I'm gonna write a book or something like that, and I'm gonna mention these things. So yeah. So basically, you like Pat's card because of the people, and you hate Pat's card. Yeah, because snorting of the people. people. You know, snorting people. This garlic smell of <laughs> yeah. So. It's not really connected with law, my excellent, your excellence, no, no. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I will forever face you as your highness now. Um, <laughs> no, but that was really good. Um, good sense of humor, good pace, good structure. The only thing you did wrong was where the question is something. Just listen to the question. Make sure you answer the question head on. I know it's a stupid exercise, but it will teach you that when the question is saying, would you do it again? The answer shouldn't be, well, I did do it again on the return journey. No, 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 next time around, would you in future do it again? Okay. But that was really good. Thank you. Very well done. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. President, Your Excellencies. My name is uh, Christina Bayerchak, and today I will appear on behalf of the applicant, uh, the uh, dog Jesse. Um, my issues uh, will concern Article F1 of the Dogs uh, Convention. The applicant states that the right of dog to um, family, home and care was violated by the uh, respondents. Uh, my uh, submissions will be based on uh, three main issues. The first one will concern uh, the right to family, the second will concern the right to home, and the third will concern the right to care. So let's move to the first issue. Um, the applicant states that his right to family was violated by the respondents, um, uh, namely the people whom he considered to be his family. Uh, but they uh, left him alone and went abroad. Uh, they uh, swam in the sea, they enjoyed life, they had a rest while he was missing them alone here in Ukraine. Um, the second issue uh, concerns uh, the right to home. And the matter is that uh, the dog didn't live in his uh, home. He lived with the strangers. He missed his home. Uh, maybe uh, that home uh, that he lived in was uh, good, but it doesn't matter because it wasn't his native home. And the uh, third issue concerns uh, the right to care. Um, the dog states that uh, he lacked care, um, that uh, strangers didn't care pretty much about him, uh, they didn't love him so, him so much. Um, so, um, to conclude with, as the applicant states that uh, his right under uh, the Article 1 of the uh, Dogs Convention was violated by the respondents, and he asks your, we ask your excellencies to order uh, the uh, dog's family not to leave him anymore. I'm afraid uh, the respondent did raise the specific point that the dog had been the dog has been very naughty boy because last time he was left alone um, he ran around and he broke one of the uh, plates that's why they couldn't leave him alone again how would your uh, client respond to the fact that he was a very naughty boy firstly it was a girl <laughs> Secondly, uh, you state that um, she uh, ran, uh, ran away. She ran around the house and broke one of the plates. Uh, but um, it's not an enough reason to leave her alone for such a long term. I, uh, she considers um, it to be. She considers she doesn't deserve uh, such. Um, Mm, punishment and uh, all the dogs um, are kind of naughty. Uh, what is the alternative? Should they have taken her on holiday? Should they have um, left her alone in the house and, and with no food? 
uh, no, definitely. Uh, they uh, might have taken her with uh, themselves. Um, it's not such a problem uh, to take care about her while uh, resting. Um, you just need one um, of the members of the family to be with her, to walk with her, and others may rest all that time. Um, you might... Um, not go abroad, just uh, rest uh, near your uh, house. There are pretty, mu pretty much uh, possibilities to um, have rest there. Um, there are many alternatives, just uh, don't leave the talk alone uh, for, um, for a long term. Do you think that it's a good alternative to lose your holiday and get that the dog will miss you? My dog didn't miss me too much, and I can rest, and then he's happy when I come, and sometimes he's not happy when I come because he likes to spend time with my uncle. <laughs> Uh, so your uh, dog mm, didn't dress to court. My date, uh, he missed his family very, very much. He uh, didn't enjoy living with strangers like your dog enjoyed living with your uncle. Um, so he asks, um, respectfully asks your excellencies uh, to order his family not to leave him anymore. Thank you. Okay, again, very good, but your eye contact. What is up here? There's something up here that everyone keeps looking at. Um, look at the people. If you can't look at them directly in their eyes, the expression is you look at their foreheads, because no one can tell whether you're looking at my forehead or my eyes. So mm -hmm. I will never be able to tell that. Same with everyone else. Just make sure you scan the room. Um, number two, in terms of things you can improve, at the start, calm down, breathe. There is a little trick that some people do, which is to have some water with you. At the start, take a sip. Whenever you think you're getting a bit out of breath, take a sip. But at the start, you were kind of out of breath. Until you got into your flow, you were kind of... <laughs> Um, so just be mindful of that. However, I know it's your actual dog story, but very quick thinking to turn around and say, well, it's a girl. Um, that doesn't happen with everyone, so you are quick on your feet, which is, again, one of the best assets you can have. Um, well done. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, good morning, Mr. President, Your Excellencies. My name is Anastasia Kutlerchuk, and I would like to present to you the issue of the conflict which may arise between the right to freedom of expression and the right to privacy of a person. To start with, I would like to emphasize that this, uh, this, these two rights are universally recognized under the number of treaties and under the number of national legislations. Uh, it is generally considered that these two rights are in, in conflict with each other. For example, if I own some information about my friend, about his uh, or her personal life, which I want to share with somebody else, while they want to keep it in secret, what should I do? Just which right has to be protected? My right to express information or person's right to privacy? Uh, there is a conflict. But there is another side to this case. For example, some information just needs privacy to be shared. It may sound like a paradox, but it is true. Uh, I can present you an example. When a minister wants to discuss some political issues with his or her colleagues, and he does not want to disclose this information to the general public, then he needs this privacy and and in any other way, this information cannot be discussed. Uh, so, when this conflict actually arises, we cannot absolutely protect one of the rights. There needs to be an estimation of the valuability of each of the rights. For example, if is uh, in current situation more uh, the right of a person to privacy more important, or an uh, a necessity to share this information with the society. 
In conclusion, I would like to say that the existence of the, those two opposite rights should not lead to a complete abandonment of one of them. But it is necessary to always remember that privacy is a, f a right to control the information, while expression is a freedom to share this information. So uh, thank you for your attention. I am available for your questions. Agent, how would you uh, practice these two rights in the life of a celebrity? If they have a very public life, which should you apply in what situation? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, in my opinion, celebrity, when uh, she behaves in a particular way, she allows some uh, important information about his or her life to be shared. But there are some frames within which this information can be shared and some really private, uh, private information from uh, the sources which are not public cannot be shared with the community in any way if the celebrity uh, herself or himself does not give the allowance to share this information. Which do you think should be primary? So should there be a presumption of privacy or should there be a presumption of freedom of information? Uh, Your Excellency, of course there is a presumption of privacy unless the case concerns the interests of the society or uh, the breach of another person's rights. In this case, the freedom of expression and the necessity to share the information is more important and therefore uh, the right to privacy may be limited. I'm sorry, Agent, what about copyright? Is it, is it contrary to the right to freedom of expression? Uh, I'm sorry, I do not fully understand your question. The right, is it copyright? Yes. It, is it contrary to the right to freedom of expression? <laughs> uh, of course, it is not contrary to the freedom of expression because it is a way of protection of some person's intellectual property and it is covered by a little bit other field of law and in, I think that it is just a way to protect uh, some person's intellectual property. Plant your feet. Straight. The entire time you were kind of... Um, so be careful. Even now you're, you're, you're still <laughs> sideways a little bit. There we go. Straight. Perfect. <laughs> Um, good pace, good scanning of the room, good flagging. You need to enjoy it. You were so, I mean, it's perfect. It's almost machine-like perfect. But you need to enjoy, you need to show. Like, when you're talking right now, you smile, you interact, you engage, rather than, I need to make these points and then move here and then... So you can see the mechanics ticking along in the brain. Pretend like you're enjoying it at least. But again, I am happily surprised at how well everyone is coping so far. Well done. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Vaselina Balion. And uh, my report deals with the most important right and beyond any doubt, this right is the right to life, which is protected by Article 2 of the European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, it is a common knowledge that either mine or your right to life is protected by Article 2. But there is the question, does Article 2 protect the right to life of an unborn child? In other words, has a woman a possibility or a right to perform an abortion. Um, first of all, it should be noted that only a born child is a subject to the right and consequently is a subject to the right to life. Thus, uh, the European Court of Human Rights doesn't indicate whether it is uh, the prohibition of allowance or allowance to perform ab abortion under the convention. The woman can make abortion only if it is allowed under the domestic law and according to the domestic le legislation. Nevertheless, 
women cannot perform abortion for any reason at, at, and at any time she wants it. Um, in its case, uh, the uh, European Court of Human Rights states that we should protect the embryo in the name of human dignity. Thus, uh, I would like to emphasize that the performance of abortion is justified by the Convention only if there is a threat of violation of another article of the Convention. Thank you for your attention. I'm available for your questions. I have two questions. Question number one, you said specifically that Article 2 doesn't apply to unborn children. However, you said by trying to protect the human integrity. Is that one of the articles? Is it all in Article 2? Is there a contradiction there that they try to protect unborn children, the right to the right of the embryo, as you put it, by relying on integrity? Um, I'm not sure I um, exactly got your question, but maybe you uh, misinterpreted my words. I've said we should uh, that the court stated that we should protect the embryo in the name of human dignity. Sorry, human dignity, not integrity. My yes. Apologies. But human dignity doesn't fall under Article 2. Um, um, I've stated that we don't protect the life of an unborn child. But there cannot be the uh, complaint before the court when the woman only states, I want to perform abortion because I want this. Uh, it should be justified by another article of the Convention. In that way, um, the court stating that we should protect the embryo in the name of human dignity, uh, the court state that we cannot um, allow the woman to perform abortion at any time. It should be justified by the protection of other right. Doesn't that create a, a two-fold system? Because first and foremost, it's about the national legislation. So if the national legislation allows performance of abortion for any reason at any time, then that's allowed. But if the national legislation doesn't allow it, then there will be a minimum threshold which prevents the same woman applying for that abortion because they happen to live in a different jurisdiction which is not as friendly towards abortion. So is it fine to have different standards in different countries? Um, the, uh, every country has its uh, um, freedom to um, state whether the, uh, whether the abortion is possible to perform or whether it is not. Um, of course, if it is um, prohibited in the country, um, but the woman has, uh, um, but there is a threat of, viol uh, of uh, violation of woman's right to health or her right to life, then she can complain um, before the court and um, it is um, for 50 percent, I suppose, that the court will um, admit that there has been a violation of other right and uh, that's why the prohibition of performance of abortion will not be um, Justified. Anyone else? So the abortion uh, would be prohibited uh, in the, um, any terms of pregnancy? Um, so if I'm pregnant uh, only in one month? Well, you should understand that every country um, put its own limits when the abortion can be performed. For example, in our country, in, in Ukraine, uh, the woman can perform abortion for any reason, or in other words, on her will or on demand, um, until 12 weeks. And uh, uh, within the period between 12 weeks and 24 weeks, the woman can perform abortion only for medical or, or social reasons. After that time, the embryo is considered as uh, the almost 
fully uh, uh, as a human because um, it's a period of seven weeks when the uh, birth of a child um, is um, hopefully um, the uh, state when it can uh, live by itself. So you should understand that the um, limits when the uh, abortion can be performed is uh, put by the state according to the um, periods of gestation, which uh, shows how the embryo is uh, developing and which shows how it is close to function by itself. Thank you for your attention and for your questions. Nicely done, great pace, great enunciation. You will never have a problem with someone understanding you. Um, you try to look around, it was obvious, or so you would forget, and then suddenly you think, ah, I, I need to look around, and then you start looking. Um, but, I know this is a serious topic that you've picked, so it's difficult to be less serious about it, but you're so serious. <laughs> you can still have something other than a You can't talk about abortion without having the space. So, do feel free to just, even if you talk about abortion, um, you can turn around and say, well, that is a good point. It's not a smile, it's almost an acknowledgement of it. So, just make sure you don't come across as someone who is just so very serious about everything. You're, it's a serious topic, you have to maintain it, you can't joke about it. But at the same time, have that balance of being a little bit more flexible. Well done. Thank you. Good morning, Your Excellencies. My name is Taras Sevak, and I am the agent for the applicant, the unacknowledged state of murder. For the next two minutes, I will address you the issue concerning the violation of murder citizens' right to self-determination. Under this issue, applicant submits two arguments. According to the violation of right to freedom of modern nations, and according to the violation of according to the discrimination of modern natives. Moving on to the first submission, I would like to tell you that Gondor armies are just isolated murder. Modern natives have any ability to travel and communicate with any other world. Moving on to the second submission, I would like to tell you that modern natives are always discriminative. We are just considered as a Nazi after the Second World War. Gondor and Rokan and other successful states are just claiming that we are unable to build our own democratic state. Despite the fact that modern citizens, orcs, on referendum voted more than 18% for self-determination and building its own republic. To conclude, applicant submits that Gondor and Rogans violated the modern citizen's right to self-determination. Thank you for your attention and I am available for your question. So, what about the relationship between right to self-determination and right to territorial integrity of states? Um, now I'm speaking, thank you for your question, and now I'm just speaking that orcs were discriminated by Gondor and Rokan. And due to this fact, they are unable to build their own states. They were deprived of the right to uh, self-determination, to build own state, to create their own authorities and to solve their own issues by their own. You keep talking about the orcs of Mordor. Yes, but sure. Mordor is not just orcs. There are so many other natives of Mordor that you seem to not care about. 
Uh, actually, no. Uh, we care about it. Uh, and it is interesting fact which I forgot to mention and due to this you just misunderstood me. Uh, it is all because of uh, after the Great War between the Mordor, which was ruled um, by his previous lord, um, natives of Mordor were almost killed. And nowadays there are left only orcs. And what about the armies of Mordor? Mordor is a very warring nation. It seems to keep picking fights with everyone. Your Excellency, after previous wars uh, passed a lot of time. And nowadays, Mordor is a democratic republic. We just want to uh, build our own state and actually we haven't got any armies. And who is your head of state? Uh, now, uh, under the... No, under the project of um, Republic of Moda, uh, we are um, concerning to create uh, the Parliament of Moda, which um, will consist of uh, representatives of each region of Moda. Thank you. Okay. From me, I'm not going to highlight everything you did right, which was most things. <laughs> Two things that you could improve on. Number one, your pace is great, but you still have a habit of falling into the trap of the urns. Be careful. Number two, and more importantly, the judge is never wrong. <laughs> I didn't misunderstand you. Apologies if I have misled the court. Apologies if I did not make myself clear. It's your fault that I didn't understand. Even if I'm stupid, and even if I'm saying something completely wrong, it's not my fault. It's, my fault. it's your fault. But that civility, that politeness of saying, apologies if I didn't make myself clear, is one of those fantastic English phrases. I don't know if you, anyone has seen that, one of those internet memes of what the English people say and what they really mean. Apologies if I didn't make myself clear means I was very clear, you're just too stupid to understand me. <laughs> but it's just a polite way of saying it. So avoid saying that you misunderstood me. But very well done. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Your Excellencies. My name is uh, Denis Gatsinyuk. Um, and I will be talking uh, about two minutes uh, addressing the statement that studying law caused a great problems in your life. Uh, there are three points I will cover today. Firstly, I will tell you about, uh, about the views of most people about your future and your skills. Then, I will cover the stereotypes uh, about lawyers uh, in minds of a lot of people. And then, I will give you um, uh, one second. Uh, yeah, uh, and then uh, I will tell you about well, what exactly the legal position of uh, violation by studying law your rights. So, my, uh, moving to my first point, there are a lot of thoughts in minds of uh, other people about lawyers and uh, actually about your future career and your skills. First uh, point is uh, that uh, you are supposed to be a worker in McDonald's uh, or uh, it's, in a ba it's in the best case, but another case is you will be unemployed. Uh, it's just because uh, in our country there are a lot of lawyers, so uh, it's quite difficult for us to employ to be employed. Uh, then, another thought is uh, that we know everything about law since our first day in the university. And our friends often ask us about some things uh, and if we cannot, uh, if we are not able to uh, answer properly at the first time, they say, but you are a lawyer, you should know that. Uh, 
Um, and it's very repeaty thing because they don't understand that you are just a student of first course, for example, and you cannot know that properly. Uh, moving to my second point, it's about stereotypes. Uh, lawyers are considered in uh, our society as boring, as often corrupt, arrogant people, uh, and um, and the other stereotype is we are either rich people or a stupid people, uh, because uh, if you are rich and you have a tears uh, in uh, I don't know a court system of a country, you will be employed well, and uh, if you uh, will not employ it well, you will be uh, not uh, succeed, not, not reaching your uh, success, yeah. And moving to my last point, it's about uh, the violation by Stalin law uh, rights for uh, rights to respect for family and private life guided by Eight article of European Convention of Human Rights. I'm going to stop you right there. You say there's a, a stereotype that lawyers are either stupid or rich. Yeah. Uh, Which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am not rich, but uh, I hope I. I am not rich, but I hope I'm not stupid too. Uh, it's a stereotype, and uh, I think we should fight with stereotypes. But you know. No, I'm not already a lawyer, but uh, stereotypes about lawyers are actually um, re relevant also to students uh, who study law. Because uh, if a person wants to study law, uh, it means that he will be in future a lawyer. So, uh, moving to my third position, yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. The judge wants to ask a question, they won't even hear the rest of it. Um, what is your ambition? Do you want to be a lawyer? And if so, in what field? Well, great uh, question, Your Excellency. Um, well, yeah, I want to be a lawyer, but I don't know now um, what sphere I will be uh, interested in. But I think I will be a very kind lawyer <laughs> and maybe a uh, I will make justice, yeah. 10 seconds to wrap up and conclude. Uh, well, uh, in conclusion, my uh, point is that studies law create uh, uh, a great problems in your life, but it's still rather it. So thank you for, for your intention. <clears throat> You are the exact opposite of, is it Vaselina? Am I horribly mispronouncing that? Hi. <laughs> she was very much sort of stand straight, the don't say anything, don't even <coughs> pronounce and don't show any emotions. You are very animated. It's good to have that energy. And even now, you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to compose yourself. Um, it's good to have energy and excitement and it makes the judge enjoy it but at the same time there has to be a level of formality as well she was too formal you're too animated so find the balance between the two of you as where it should be uh, good flagging could improve a little bit on eye contact the most important thing is the click the clack and the running around um, with too much energy don't drink coffee don't drink red bull none of that. <laughs> yeah. and finally be mindful. I have not said this to anyone else before, but be mindful of your time management. I think your speech was about a five minute speech instead of a two minute speech. Um, so be careful not to get too caught up because it's so interesting and so exciting and you want to talk about everything. Okay. Well done. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Your Excellencies. I would like to talk about uh, performances. Uh, of Ukrainian's team of the top sport competition in 2016, uh, such as Euro 2016 uh, and Olympic Games. Uh, so about Euro 2016. 
Uh, Ukrainian team played a very a quite good level of uh, all uh, friendly matches, but uh, they lose all matches on the Euro 2016. As a result, they left the tournament. Uh, about Olympic game, uh, usually we have a best performance uh, than uh, winter game. As a result, we uh, took uh, 11th place in previous Olympic game. And uh, the most favorite um, kind of sport uh, are um, athletics, uh, rhythmic uh, gymnastics and swimming. Uh, so, uh, now we're just hoping that in this year, in this Olympic game, uh, we will have better results than, uh, than in previous Olympic game. And uh, we hope that uh, our team can represent as well as they can. Thank you for your attention. Was there any... Sorry, go on. A rumor had it that our football team was paid to, to lose all the fight. Was it like... What is your attitude to it? Uh, sorry, I, I lose the first part of question. Like, rumor has it that our football team was paid to lose all the matches. Yeah. What is your attitude to it? Uh, thank you. Uh, I, th <laughs> I think that um, the main mistake uh, was moral uh, preparation uh, to this competition. We have a lot of uh, good uh, footballists in our team, but uh, they also are very uh, uh, much confident. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, they usually they don't think about uh, team building, about team player. And uh, I think in this kind of sport, it's very important to uh, make a uh, team game. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't have it. And uh, as a result, we left this competition. Oh, it's a brilliant team. Uh, for example, they, they have a uh, population near uh, 3,000 uh, yeah, 3, people, and uh, we have uh, 3,000, uh, yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, 43 million people, yeah. And uh, you can compare that. Uh, we have a big potential, bigger potential than uh, that uh, country. But as a result, we didn't receive um, uh, we didn't receive um, um, good result, sufficient result, I think. Thank you. I don't know if it will make sense. Do you know what poise means? Poise. Poise. It means focus. Mm -hmm. Very good. However, so you, you, you go to the point, very sort of direct, excellent. The negative, so many ums and ahs. I know you're thinking, especially because English isn't your first language. Just have that moment of silence. It's much better. And one of the things that you can do to significantly improve is, like I said, whilst you're not supposed to read your speech, write your speech. Practice it, mm -hmm. and it will feel much easier to do it. Okay, thanks. Thank you for your attention. Uh, good morning, Your Excellencies. My name is uh, Ivan Yermichuk. So today my main team, uh, theme is uh, football, especially it's a, a, a dynamic of games of uh, Portugal national football team. So uh, yesterday they played uh, against uh, well, the Wales national football team. So they're uh, they're won, and that's, uh, they become uh, the first uh, finalist of Euro 20, uh, 2016. And all the uh, by the time they uh, never won at the main time. So they have uh, so they have. Uh, uh, two, uh, three draw matches, one additional time, and uh, two, one on a penalty stage. So, 
they they have uh, yesterday they have the best played game uh, at this stage at this uh, tournament so uh, at the final however there are two pay two pair uh, one pair of uh, good the best the powerful uh, national football team as uh, germany as uh, france so there were uh, at uh, nine uh, at the 10 of the july we will see the good played match Thank for your attention. Um, Who's going to win? Germany. <laughs> but you're supporting Portugal. I just analyze Portugal dynamics of games. Don't you think it's a disgrace that Portugal gets to get to the final having not won a single of its group stage matches? <laughs> In my opinion, I think that's really that's really true. But Portugal have strength, they have uh, speed, they have uh, individual uh, skills and ability to play to the end, as we see. And my final question: Would you not rather see Portugal lose just to see Cristiano Ronaldo cry? <laughs> uh, Thank you for your question. Mm, no, I. What? <laughs> I want to. Good, good played game. I want to, to see, good football skills of every uh, footballist of every part of team. I want to find the time not, the time not, uh, just. Mm, Junk, my time. Anyone else? Kay. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Two main points before you run away. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, you're much better at answering questions than you are at presenting it. And I can tell you why. You're too nervous. So when you stood up, you were almost trying to finish it and run away as quickly as possible, as you are doing at the end. <laughs> Compose yourself, relax. Um, when you started, you were kind of almost mumbling. I'm going to talk about Portugal football team because I really don't want to be here, and I'm going to finish this, and I'm going to run away. Um, relax. Enjoy. However, when you came to answering questions, you became far more relaxed, far better. The only downside was, as you became relaxed, instead of the posture that you have standing straight, you started going, well, I want to see. So keep your formality when you're speaking, but just relax a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Natalia Subotina, and uh, my short speech uh, will be related to the topic of the online education. I will cover the three main issues. The first one is about my experience of how I get involved into it. The second point is uh, about online platforms that I would like to recommend you. And the third is uh, what are the benefits of online education that I personally experienced during the online learning. Turning to the, my first point, um, I start online learning in the form of MOOC or Massive Open Online Courses three years ago when my English teacher recommended it to me. And uh, my first course was from Leiden University. It was called um, Terrorism and Counterterrorism Comparing Theory and Practice. And I really enjoyed that course. And since then, I'm just keen on online learning and I like to enroll in the courses that will bring me some new and useful information. Um, turning to the second point, uh, I started from the Coursera online platform, but except Coursera, later on I tried edX and uh, FutureLearn. And uh, these are the platforms that unite lots of uh, the top universities from all over the world. Um, and you may find there useful courses for the legal profession and uh, general courses in the sphere of international relations or international law. And as well as 
um, all the other courses related to you, maybe topics of your hobbies or something like that. And uh, uh, except the foreign online platforms, there is also one popular Ukrainian online education platform which is called Prometheus. And recently I started there one interesting course about the history of Europe from the Ukrainian Catholic University. And turning to the third point, uh, what benefits I personally experienced um, is the two points, is the knowledge and the English. Because you may get really useful and practical knowledge there. For example, during the preparation to my first Jessup ne the during the previous year, I watched the uh, course entitled The Introduction to International Law, prepared by the Catholic University of Louvain, in located in Belgium. And it was like, just perfect uh, compliance of everything that I needed for the preparation. And um, also the second benefit is English, because uh, while you are learning using the English, you may um, really start thinking about the specific issues in English, and it helps you a lot. So my short conclusion, enjoy online education, uh, try to register as soon as possible and start learning and experience the benefits that it will bring you. Thank you. Any questions? Um, don't you think that online uh, study is a little bit more boring than study in its traditional terms? So you are not engaged in this process with other people uh, to feel all the benefits face to face? I wouldn't personally agree with that because online education is not only about the videos and online lectures that the professor gives you. It's also about interaction with your colleagues, with your peers. In some courses you need to write peer assessment, uh, review, so you write your piece of work, you write some research paper and then you exchange this research paper with students from other universities and also you check their uh, reports and their research papers. Uh, also you have forums uh, on the platform and also you have a uh, possibility to interact with them via Facebook because sometimes the Facebook group created for the specific course so you feel that it's not only you and computer but you're learning with real people who live all over the world. Which is the best platform? Um, I think Coursera. It's easy to use. But it recently changed and I don't like the changes, but yeah, still the Coursera is the best one for me. Thank you. Good flagging, good style, good everything. One, slow down a little. Okay. Two, Again, you did the same thing that a few others do. When you stood up at first, you're clearly nervous. The breathing and the swallowing are the perfect examples of someone who is just jumping head first. Stand there, compose yourself. Like I said, if you need a sip of water, whatever it is to calm you down. Because as you get into the flow, you get much better. But at the start, it's almost like, um, I need to get out of here first. Um, and finally, as much as your answer was perfect, what I, my question was, what is the best platform? I think Coursera. Perfect. Stop there. Okay. <laughs> Don't go on and say, well, there's been changes, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Not the question. Ignore it. Which is the best platform? <laughs> Coursera. Done. Why? And then you explain. Or do you still agree with the changes? And then you answer. But well done. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Uh, I will be glad to perform my speech before this honorable public. Uh, my name is Saman Nigaresh and I'm from Belarus. It's important information uh, because I will perform an uh, issue concerning that Belarus is a great place for travel. In regard to this issue, I will make uh, two following submissions. First, in Belarus, in Belarus uh, we have uh, great sites and uh, buildings. Second, 
uh, Belarusian cuisine is uh, unique and original. Uh, well, uh, I don't have a lot of time and I move on to the second submission. Uh, Belarusian cuisine, uh, in Belarusian cuisine we uh, have food uh, uh, made from potatoes. The most uh, popular food is uh, uh, pancakes from, made from potatoes. More famous uh, like draniki. Taste of draniki is incredible. Thus, uh, Belarus is almost unique and uh, beautiful country. Uh, and I will, gl I will glad uh, to see you in our country. Thank you for your attention. Yes? Potatoes I like, but Russia does potatoes, Ukraine does potatoes, Ireland. Ireland does 15,000 types of potatoes. The entire country is made of potato. What makes Belarusian potato food better? Uh, Belarus is uh, like a heaven for potato. <laughs> it's the most famous country uh, when you see a potato and we taste potato. What's the specific taste? What gives it the extra flavor? Uh, when uh, we prepare potato, uh, we do it with the uh, soul. <laughs> so we can taste your soul. <laughs> of course, of course. And uh, do you have a certain recipe for your Pancakes, pan uh, pancakes. Yes, of course, but uh, no comments. Have you ever tried with salo? <laughs> what, what? With salo? Salo? No, salo is a uh, more Ukraine recipe right? right for drying. Have you tried with salo? It's, it's, it's Maybe. Do you think Ukrainian potatoes also have soy in them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Um, there is not much I can say on bits to improve because you kept it short, you kept it brief and you actually given the whole time management issue you quite nicely said I've got two submissions but in the interest of time I'm just going to move on to the second one. Um, nice bit of humour in there. Um, I would like to see how you would cope with a more serious topic like rape <laughs> but uh, otherwise well done. Thank you. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, may it please the court. My name is Ludmila Radutova and I will be speaking about my visit to the concert of Red Hot Chili Peppers which was held yesterday at the Olympic Stadium in Kyiv. I will speak for two minutes and I will cover two things, the pros and the cons of this visit. My first submission is that this concert was really incredible. <coughs> God bless you. <laughs> Uh, the whole stadium of fans have proved that. Also, it was my very dream to visit the concert of this band. I was dreaming about that for five years. So, I can say that this concert was very and very important for me. My second submission will not be so positive. Um, as I visited the concert of Red Hot Chili Peppers, I've missed the six hours of hard work on Jessup Memorial. <laughs> so. Actually, I have not very clear conscience about that. But as I stated above, this concert was very important for me. It was in my dream. So I, I think it, there can be any doubts that this was unreplaceable for me. So therefore, I can say that despite of missing the hours of preparation for Jessup Memorial, I have did the best thing of my life recently and I think it was important and necessary for me. Thank you. Can I ask first and foremost, any of our co-teammates want to ask any questions? <laughs> <laughs> we will stay quiet. <laughs> What's your favorite song? I don't have a favorite song because I love almost every song of them, but I have one song that is, is repeated now in my head, it's Scar Tissue, and I've uh, woke up today with the song in my head. I did the song, I can stop the song. Yes, stop. it was the first, their song. Uh, is, uh, did uh, uh, Sportsman, a famous sportsman Klitschko uh, in the stadium? Oh, actually, I don't know because it was a 
a very, very, very big crowd. So maybe, I think maybe yes, in the VIP zone. Maybe a uh, team building possibility to bring your teammates to concert together. Well, well to actually, make, uh, it's useful and funny in the same time. Well, actually, it depends on them because, uh, for example, my teammate Liana uh, had listened to the songs, uh, but she wasn't uh, at the stadium. She was uh, only hanging hanging around. Well, actually, it really depends on them. Did you see the kills yesterday? Yes, of course. <laughs> it was nice. The killers? Yeah. Kills. Also, the kills. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just uh, heard the first part of the, the word. Also, there were nothing but the thieves and Ukrainian band, the hard keys. So, you didn't just watch the Red Hot Chili Peppers, you watched every single one of the acts? Yes, for six hours. And you didn't even feel guilty about the other acts for not doing research? No, because I was waiting for the Red Hot Chili Pepper uh, concert and um, I've paid the, for my ticket and my ticket covers all, all the um, uh, bands. Thank you. Um, again, good, simple. You move around. You kind of... Um, it was almost like you had the music playing in your head and you were just dancing to it as you were speaking. Uh, good structure, good pace, just plant yourself. Thank nice. you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tatiana Kravchenko and um, today I would like to have a conversation with you about a social media. Uh, online uh, social media has gained um, the worldwide popularity, uh, which has led to um, which has led to attracting um, attention um, of young adults, uh, teenagers. Each of us wants to communicate, and is uh, the simplest way uh, to have a chat in the internet. Um, especially in the social networks such as Facebook, Contacting, it may be easy to, uh, it may be easy and cheap to communicate and to contact uh, with uh, people um, across the world. Social um, social networks allow people to keep and manage their contact their um, accounts. Uh, this makes uh, it easier to um, to search you to get you. Uh, you you make um, you also uh, uh, you also choose uh, the people, uh, and you can uh, you make uh, you can invite it to your accounts. So uh, whether we um, whether you like it or or not. Um, even you agree with it, uh, it's uh, enough to be good uh, for people to express themselves and find themselves. Thank you for attention. Do you think people should put anything on social media? Um, yes, but... Um, but anything? But anything? Yes. Do you think they should put anything no, on social media? No, no, no. Not anything, but, um, but something you should... But, but, but not your private life, I think. No, um, the, the photos uh, describes you like a person um, in a better... Um, in a better view, I think. But everything is private life. If I put up a photo of what I'm having for dinner, that's my private life. Should I put that up? It depends on person, I think. It seems to me like uh, you cover pros of the social media. What about uh, uh, bad influence on uh, people interaction? Um, thank you for your question. Um, the benefits of the social uh, network, uh, it's, um, it's you, you, you contact with people without payments. Uh, you, you, may, mm, 
you may sit uh, on your kitchen, on your uh, room, and communicate with networks. Is, what about the bad things? What uh, about the bad? Bad? You you spend uh, all uh, all time in it, and um, I think um, you should you should read book. Uh, the, um, uh, in, instead of uh, sitting on the computer and uh, chatting with your friends. Thank you. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Again, nerves are coming through. Mm -hmm. So at the start, you kept on looking at your notes for comfort. Perfectly fine. But be mindful not to just end up thinking, I'm going to rely on my notes, mm -hmm. which you didn't do. So. It was quite a good way of coping with the initial nerve. I put down crazy hand. You kept on doing something, I can't remember what, but your hand was just running around like a mad. Um, look at people and listen very carefully. But in terms of your pace and your structure, I'm getting your first experience. Well done. You survived. <laughs> Can only get better from now. Thank you. Good job. So, good morning, everyone. My name is Alexander Sandel, and in following two minutes, I will speak about a really serious and global problem in our modern world. The topic of my report is the problem of hunger in the world with abundance. Actually, I took part in a conference with this topic, and therefore, it's too difficult for me to share with you with all the information I can get it. But I tried to catch your attention by some facts. So, we're all people of the 21st century, the time of development, high technologies, genetic engineering, pharmaceutical achievements, and so on. But the awful reality of our modern and progressive world is that during one wealthy man can buy even a star just for spending his stupid money. In other parts of the planet, or even his country, someone suffers from malnutrition. It seems like a joke, but it's true. United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimate that from the world's 7 plus billion people, at least three fourths of a billion people suffer from some form of malnutrition. 15,000 people die each day as a result of malnutrition. 8 million people know what it's like to go to bed hungry. Many children die each year from the disease of poverty. One children die in two seconds from the, these causes. 15 children have died in 30 seconds and took to read the statistic. This data is dramatic, isn't it? So there are four groups of people who are most um, probable from these problems. The children, pregnant women, those who are ill, and elderly person. It's obvious because this is a vulnerable groups of our society. The question is how can hunger be controlled? Perhaps there is no any answer to this question because this problem still exists and the number of monetary people in the world continues to grow. Uh, for sure, I'd like to say a lot of another information, but my time is practical left, therefore I need to come to the conclusion. One person can, can save the whole world and can feed all people in need, but it is for everyone to start doing simple things, at least to take part in charity, helping thereby those who need to with money, food or clothes. Don't forget, the future of our world in our hands, and everyone can make a little contribution for solving the global problems. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Uh, everyone should make something. What's your personal contribution to the resolution of this problem? Um, I every month I um, get some some of money to uh, special. I don't know. <laughs> I could say in English, but yeah. I, uh, yeah, I take part in charity and give some sum of money to people uh, with disabilities. What about the biggest criticism made of charities? That they are inefficient and the vast amount of money that is given to charities actually goes to waste. It goes on paying people and it goes on transportation. It doesn't actually solve any problems whatsoever. Uh, thank you for your question. You know, this problem is really actual because um, some people who are really wealthy uh, get a lot of, associate a lot of money to solving this problem, but in practical, no one knows where is this money. And the same problem um, is consider, consider about the transnational uh, locations of the money. Therefore, I can't say that there is any solution to this problem. My question, uh, this thing is right to food that is included within the scope of right to life. 
Uh, actually, yes, there are, um, we can say that uh, mentioned problems, the problem of hunger is connected to his, uh, two articles of the, of the Union Con Universal Convention of Human Rights, Article 3, which is the right to life, and Article 25, which guarantee everyone a standard of living adequate for the wealth and uh, health being according to food. Thank you very much. Your knowledge of facts and being able to whiz through them, fantastic. It will come in handy in Jessup, I can guarantee you that. Um, clearly you care about the topic and, and as a result you can demonstrate it. But, slow down, enunciate, uh, and be careful with the, again, that hand was going all over the place, sort of leaning in the hand. Plant yourself straight and then talk. Great eye contact. Um, but yeah, the most important thing is just slow down. Okay, it's my main problem. <laughs> you go and wait, slow down. Have a little mental guide for yourself. As one of the things that comes in handy, especially if you have both the problem of random hand movement and excitement and pace, as long as your hand's on the table, have that as a guide that you're, you need to slow down. As soon as you forget that your hand should be on the table, as a memory guide, that I'm going too fast. Hand back down on the table. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, my name is Alexey Yakubenko and I'm going to represent your issue concerning the benefits of the laziness. And during this issue, I will cover three main sub-issues. Uh, first of all, it is that uh, the laziness means efficiency. The second one, that the laziness moves progress. And the third one, the lazy people can, can better charge the inner batteries. And moving back to, the, to our first issue, first sub issue, it, uh, it's better to state that the lazy people they may, they can make some uh, things more efficient than those which are hardworking, because the lazy people they are always looking for the easiest way to do the to get the job done, done. And for example, it may be proved by the statement of the Bill Gates when he stated that he will better give uh, the hard work to the laziest worker. And uh, <clears throat> also, it may be said, for example, we may compare with the situation with, uh, of the Jessup Summer School. You get the case, and those who are, like to, to study to, for hard working, they're trying to search for conventions, search for something similar cases. And the lazy one, he will just Google the title of the case. And moreover, he not just types this, he, ju he will use this beautiful combination of the copy and paste. <laughs> <laughs> and um, moving, uh, moving to the se second sub-issue, uh, that uh, the laziness uh, leads to progress. We are all lazy and we are all trying to do something that will ease our life. For example, this microphone, just not to yell, we may use this microphone so, and everybody can hear us. And uh, moving uh, to, the, to our third sub-issue, that uh, everyone, that lazy people may better charge their batteries because they have a time to think about something. They have a time just to spend for themselves. And after that, they would be more, uh, more in better potential. They would be more fresh to do something. And uh, I have a question. <laughs> so you say laziness is good because it will make you fresh to do something, but it will make you fresh to be more lazy again. So you're just going to stay in bed because you're lazy. You're not going to move. Now you're fresh you're fresh to be more lazy again and you're not going to move. You're just going to stay lazy forever and not get out of bed. Yes, Your Excellency, however, it depends on the particular individual because for those who try just to spend their time for themselves, to be a little bit lazy, it, it will give some benefits. So it's about a little lazy, not all the way lazy. Yes, all the way laziness may just harm you. But if you're just in the right, in the, will, will you, when you find the, in the, something, the, uh, me, something in the middle, it would be perfect. Um, you also mentioned thinking, but thinking also takes a force. Maybe you will not think at all being lazy. <laughs> um, if uh, I correctly understand your question, Your Excellency, is that. <coughs> Uh, you, yes, you try, when you think you're also doing some work, 
and uh, however you think that about something pleasant you try to think about something which you might to improve it uh, make you more relaxed than when you are constantly lazy about some domestic things about some work uh, or something else uh, unless you have any further questions uh, thank you for your attention oh. why should we call it laziness not just uh, having time for work and having time for rest why is it laziness because there exists uh, uh, some prejudice that the lazy that uh, those people who are spending a lot of time for themselves for uh, watching films, reading books, they are lazy because they are not doing, they are not going to the job, they are not doing something which may may spend the uh, time more efficiently. If I correctly understand your question, your excellence, and there was one. Okay, time is short. Thank you very much. Yeah. Similar comments. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Stop moving around so much. Plant yourself, calm, collected. Um, at times you forget to look around, but that's fine. You'll get into the habit of it. Sometimes you're looking around, sometimes you just stop. Uh, again, you improve much, much more when you're answering questions because you go into the conversational flow. But even when you're answering questions, you're still way too quick. Breathe, smile. slow down. Smile. And smile, of course. Um, but yeah, not too bad at all. Well done. Thank you. Um, hi guys, my name is Tanya, and because of summer school, I spent only three hours sleeping per day. So will you when you take your Jessup. And now I will share with you my experience, my Jessup experience, as I have participated in Jessup for the first time in 2016. Probably the first stage is the months from September to January. This month you understand how useful Jessup is. You understand that you are a robot because you can, you can, uh, you can re relentlessly work. Then you understand that you are very smart because your education is not only your university education. And also you stop being a student, you become a Jessupper. As, one, as some of you have mentioned that you drop swimming because it took all your time for education and then you will have to drop Jessup because Jessup also takes your time for education and Jessup is not university. And you also mentioned that you uh, have given up writing memorial because you had a dream. And since you take Jessup you start having dreams because now Jessup is your favorite dream. And then it comes to February when around 20 days left before the oral rounds. And that is the time you understand how smart you are, because it is the first month you can really answer the questions your coach asks you. And you understand how cool you are, and then you come and you plead before the judges, and you, oh my gosh, you get that feeling, I can drive. Now I am the one who stands, who sits as a driver's seat. And oh, there is also this question you are never ready to, and I remember being asked, can a judge apply the dictionary when deciding on cyber attacks? And you just what a silly question, but you cannot give an answer to it because you haven't read the nuclear weapon case and you just stick with your article 38 of the state of the ICJ. But the third stage is the stage you have never been prepared to. And can you guess what is the stage, what the stage is? No, the Jessup ends. And when Jessup ends, you are left with nothing. And I remember waking up the following day and going to university and everyone was grieving because we didn't make it to finals but the finals is not the purpose you're going to it the purpose is fun and then you come home and i remember me coming home and opening door and understanding oh my gosh i rent an apartment and i live alone really and the second following thing as i do is go into my bedroom and open laptop and trying to do something and you have nothing to do because your homework is not a homework, it's just some silly things you need to go through in, in order to be able to answer your teacher's questions. And then you start hating Jessup, because it has been the longest relationship, relationships you have ever had, and they are broken. Someone has abandoned you. And in April, I remember persuading my coach and my co-agent that next year I will not attend Jessup. I'm giving up on it. And this, the third second I received a mail from Lena Balbic, I was like, I, I will try taking summer school because Jessup is your new love, is your first love. And once Jessupper, you are forever Jessupper. Thank you for your attention. What did
did you do with all the spare time? Well, uh, actually, um, I understood how alone I was, so I get a guinea pig to, ca to take care of. Yeah, I, get guinea pig, I got a guinea pig, and I finally found my old book list I wanted to go through, and I read a lot. Yeah. But it's really hard when you come home and you have nothing to do. And uh, I remember in November when I was writing memorials really, really intensively, I thank God that I had university to go to, because it is the only one excuse you can just not keep was the writing your memorials. Anyone else? Here's a question. One question. So, yeah, agent, what would happen with your Guinea Pig when you went, uh, when you decided to participate in Jessica once again? How can you uh, give more time to your Guinea Pig? Well, I think you join the dog. Yeah, <laughs> join the dog, probably. I, I will get another Guinea Pig, so they have company. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will get another guinea pig, so my first guinea pig will have a company. Yeah. With Jessup, you know, answers to anything. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, pace. Mm -hmm. Too quick. Way too quick. Feet, you are dancing around. Um, and finally, um, again, I'm not going to go through all the stuff that you did right, because you've got the experience, you know the stuff that you're doing right, you've had a lot of practice, no doubt. Um, thirdly, probably can't be helped here, but don't show your hands. Mm -hmm. You're clearly, the little shake was coming in, which showed, you didn't sound nervous, but you showed nervousness. So, so far as possible, I think the hand behind your back is probably a good option. Well done. Thank you. Uh, so, good morning everyone, my name is Olena and I'm going to speak about five tips on improving your time management. Well, the first one is multitasking. Multitasking makes it possible to achieve a great deal uh, in a smaller time than making one task at a time. Uh, it also um, lets you enhance your productivity and minimize the time it takes uh, to complete your tasks. Uh, my second tip flows out from the first one. It's uh, um, prioritizing tasks. Uh, when you uh, understand which task is more important, uh, you uh, put it first on your list, and uh, we all know that we lose our productivity by the end of the day, and as we procrastinate and put off the most important tasks, we, um, we make them in a less efficient way. I'm going to interrupt you. Can you give me your fifth, your fourth, and then your third? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, it's important to set goals. Uh, if you have a small no notebook, it's good to write down um, uh, your closest goals goals you have to achieve. Uh, the, in this way, uh, it will let you visualize the goals. And also, you, you can try to write down the time you have to allocate to each task and try to stick to this time. Uh, well, uh, the fourth argument would be uh, you have to learn to say no, because some people tend to um, feel guilty when they don't have time, but when their relatives or friends ask them to uh, ask them to help them, and um, they do it, but they uh, but later then uh, they have lack of time for themselves and for the tasks they have to achieve by themselves. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. Okay. Time management is a topic. You've got <laughs> over two minutes. How do you respond to the fact that your time management speech has not managed to keep time? <laughs> Well, I believe I didn't count on nervousness. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I would get it uh, and I would do it in two minutes. Any other questions? No? What is the most important of your list? Prioritizing, I think. Good. No, that's exactly what I was looking for. The short, snappy answer. Okay. Well done. Reliance on notes. Be careful. 
as soon as I told you to move on to the end, you actually became better because you stopped relying so much on your nose. But at the start, you kept on looking, kept on looking, kept on looking. Um, you sway. And as you sway, your hand also comes up. Your feet move. So from your shoulders, you sway, and then everything else starts moving as well. Um, good pace. Very good pace and very good structure. But finally, you don't make an um sound, you make a sound. <laughs> Be very, very careful of that. Okay. Have it in your mind. As soon as you go, go. Nope, I gotta stop that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Emma Potapa and I will tell you today about the latest news about the case of Andreas Anders Breivik. Uh, I will cover the issues of the position of uh, Anders Breivik and the state, um, the state of Norway. Uh, so first, uh, the state of Norway appealed uh, against the court uh, ruling on that uh, the, um, there was a violation of uh, uh, Anders Breivik uh, rights as uh, he claimed that uh, the state has violated his rights, uh, that he was kept in the isolation. Uh, the, food, the, equal, the quality of the food uh, in the prison was bad, and uh, he was often kept uh, with handcuffed. Um, and uh, also he had any contacts with uh, his uh, extremist uh, uh, partners. Um, uh, the uh, state uh, claimed that his rights were not violated as uh, he is uh, serving 21 years imprisonment for killing 77 people in 2011. And uh, these uh, um, conditions uh, are su suitable and uh, appropriate uh, for him. Uh, the court uh, uh, ruled uh, that the Breivix, uh, that under Andres Breivik's rights were uh, in this uh, course violated and uh, awarded uh, to Breivix uh, the payment of uh, 28,000 of pounds. Uh, however, the court uh, uh, dismissed uh, Breivik's um, submission that uh, that uh, there was a breach of uh, his right to uh, family, uh, the right to respect of family, and uh, uh, contacts with his extremist partners. You agree? Uh, I think that uh, uh, the submissions of uh, Andres Breivik uh, are not uh, applicable as uh, he has uh, roughly um, breached the law. So I don't agree with uh, the court's ruling. You don't think prisoners should have any rights? I think the imprisonment uh, should be strict and uh, the conditions of Breivik, uh, like uh, keeping him in the three uh, rooms cell with uh, the TV and uh, uh, the opportunity to make exercises and to watch TV uh, to uh, humanity. So it's too nice to him? Yes. So he should be out there breaking rocks in blistering hot sun? No, but just kept as a usual uh, criminal. I'm sorry, agent, uh, as I know properly, Mr. Breivik killed more than 50 people and then uh, there, is, there are some problems with uh, his punishment. Maybe it was better capital punishment for him and there will be no problems with keeping, them free, keeping him in prison, obviously. I understand your question. Uh, thanks for it. Uh, but according to the national legislation, there is no capital punishment in Norway. So it was uh, the strictest for him, according to the national legislation. Do you think it would be better to keep him in a mental facility because he has problems with his mind rather than as a prisoner? I think uh, he is uh, mentally healthy 
And uh, I don't think there is a right decision to keep him in <laughs> your suggested conditions. So you're saying the person who kills like around 50 people is mentally passive. Maybe some rights of those terrorists m must be restricted while in detention or while in custody? As I mentioned, he, according to the information, he killed 77 people. But uh, it is because of his political views and uh, um, his uh, um, individual uh, hate and attitude to other religions, so, other believers. But it has nothing to do like with mental disorders, just it is. Does the political view give you a right, you use, give you a right to, you know, just go and kill somebody and there is nothing mental in it? I think no, but it is like the conditions in, of his life, these are political views. But it doesn't uh, mean that he has mental disorders. Thank he you. is responsible for sorry, his sorry, actions. Sorry, 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 sorry. We know where you're going with this, um, in the interest of time. One, great pace. Two, you're very logical in terms of how you structure your points. So, brilliant. However, you pause and you say, um. When you do, you look away. Secondly, you lean on your right foot. And for some reason, you raise your right eyebrow as you speak. Yeah, it's like my mimics. Yeah. <laughs> face mimics. The face you can't do anything about. If it happens, it happens. But your right foot, you can by standing straight. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, and finally, you're the one person I have ever told, don't smile so much. <laughs> you are likable and you're friendly. And as a result, smiling is perfect. But not when you're talking about the murder of 77 people. <laughs> so, he, I mean, it's not that it didn't look bad. It actually worked for you because you have a very friendly and approachable style. But if you're arguing something that is indefensible, if you are arguing on behalf of Andreas, that would not come out so well. If you say, well, he did murder 77 people, however, <laughs> smiling about murder. So just be very careful about your smiling, because you're possibly the only person I've said this to. Smile less. Um, so if in doubt, actually, like, like, now is perfect. Not now, it's an idea. Um, but basically, be, be mindful of the context of your smiling. Uh, I, may I respond to your comment? Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for your commentary, but to tell the truth, uh, I'm trying to do something with my smiling nature, yeah, my friendly approach, but really, it's I can't cope with this because, uh, like, I got used to smile. <laughs> In which case, we have a second approach. When it comes to the issues, make sure you don't pick the issue that is indefensible. Pick the issue that you can't smile without anyone worrying about it. So if but it's divided into, let's say, uh, at one point you have to defend a, a murderer, and on the other hand you have to talk about environmental issues, don't pick the defense of the murderer, pick the environmental issues. Okay. It's just about playing your strengths. Your strength is your friendly, smiling self. If you can't reduce that, then just pick the stuff that suits your friendly, smiling face. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Kashina and today I'd like to tell you about the shopping. We do shopping every day and some people uh, want to earn money on us. And that is why they put the traps. And today I would like to tell you about them. So uh, marketing specialists uh, use three weapons. The first it is music, then smell and the third it is the location of the products. So uh, the first is the music. Uh, maybe you have noticed that uh, in the morning uh, the music in the supermarkets is uh, calm and silent and in the evening it is loud and energetic. And that is why because in the evening there are a lot of people in the supermarkets and uh, when we hear loud music uh, we want to uh, go away. 
though it is necessary not to make a queue in the supermarkets. Uh, the second weapon, it is smell. Uh, markets, uh, marketing so specialists uh, know that um, we are um, we are very we pay a lot of attention to smells, and that is why the first sections uh, it is uh, bread and fruits. Uh, and when we take the smell, we want to buy something tasty that we didn't put in our uh, shop list. And the third weapon, it is the location of the products. Because we are usually very busy, in a hurry, and we take something that is very close to us. But in the middle shelves, uh, sellers put uh, those products that are very popular and they need to sell them. So it is better to stop and find that will be more useful for you. So in conclusion, I would like to tell you that we should remember in our brains these traps in order not to be the victim of the sellers. Thank you for your attention. Uh, will you use these tips while shopping for, for clothes? For, for what? For clothes. Um, yes. Uh, I use this tip because, uh, for example, when I buy clothes, I try to um, uh, to look through the all shelves because in the most uh, uh, most forest I can find the um, the cheapest or the best for me, and also I try to uh, to spend uh, my whole day for shopping because I can think more about. Um, Am I really need this thing? But if there is a your dream dress, but the smell is not so good and the music is loud, but it's your dress, will you buy it? Uh, really, I don't have such problems when I'm crazy about some things. When was the last time you went shopping without having headphones in your ears? Without headphones. Her? Everyone wears headphones. I always wear headphones when I'm shopping. I don't care about the music they're playing. I listen to my own music. Really, I have never wear headphones during shopping. And uh, as for me, I don't pay attention on the music in the supermarket. Because I have my own shop list and I try to follow it. Anyone else? Thank you. Your speech and your presentation Damn near perfect. Good style, good structure, good poise, everything, everything, everything. Answering questions is where you should improve. Structure your answer. Take a moment, think about it. Um, the perfect example was where you could have given a yes or no answer. Uh, alternatively, if you can say the answer in three words, don't say it in ten. So the only piece that I would say you can possibly improve on at this point is more to do with your answering questions than your actual presentation of speech. Thanks. Good luck. Hi everyone, my name is Irana Matias and today I'm going to tell you about my first job interview uh, ever. Uh, so I will provide you with uh, some facts. Uh, secondly, uh, I will tell you about the funniest moment and the third uh, I'm going to tell you about the lessons I've learned from, th from that day. So, uh, turning uh, back to the first point, facts. Um, it was Friday, heavy rains, traffic jams, and I was being late for my first job interview. Um, finally, um, when, I, when I got to the place, the, everything uh, started, the funniest moment started, because um, when I alighted from the bus on the Kontraktovas Square um, and uh, took out my laptop with GPS and tried to find the way to the office where I uh, was to be interviewed, I couldn't find it. Uh, I've heard that uh, someone is uh, ha having that problem uh, called to to um, topographic cretinism. And I always laughed at people that who had the map before the nose and couldn't find the way. But that day I realized that I'm the one of those persons. Um, but what was uh, the surprise, uh, the, the most surprising thing and the funniest is that when I got to the office which 
uh, was uh, really uh, far uh, away and which I couldn't find is that the man who interviewed me didn't ask whether uh, why I was being late for the um, uh, for the interview, but he asked whether it was easy for me to find the way because uh, a lot of persons uh, who who uh, f was looking for the office uh, are usually being late, and so uh, getting down for the last point, uh, the lessons I've learned is uh, the first one is that don't use don't rely on gps and the second is don't use bus when it rains uh, in kiev a little fast as a result of your pace you also fall into the trap of the uh, the ums just slow down it's fine to go a little bit slower no one will mind in fact, people will listen more carefully if you speak slowly. Great structure. Um, you, oh, the only other thing is, you look everywhere except at the people. You look down, you look up, you look left, you look right, but you, do not, you try to avoid looking at the people as much as possible. All you need to do is just compose yourself again. Nervousness is fine, a little bit of nerves. It's natural. The more you do it, the more you get into the habit. But just calm yourself down. As a result of that, you'll slow down, you'll avoid saying M's and R's, and you'll be able to look at people when you're delivering your speech. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. May it please the court, my name is Ruth Walaji, and I will represent the applicant food association in the case versus the respondent, Pomodoro Association, in the case, tomatoes are not fruit. For the purpose of the case, the parties have agreed that we will pronounce the word tomato and not tomato. The applicants will proceed to, the, uh, to explain the case in three points. First, that tomatoes are associated with vegetables and not fruit. Second, that tomato juice is disgusting. And third, that scientists really should review their classification of berries to exclude cucumbers, tomatoes, and bananas. On the first point, tomatoes are associated with vegetables and not fruit because you would rather have on your vegetable plates tomato and cucumber with salt, then tomato, mangoes, strawberries, and apples. On the second point, tomato juice is disgusting, but tomato juice is just confusing. On the third point, scientists should review the classifications of berries to exclude bananas because no one really believes that berries, a banana is a berry, or that tomato is a berry, or that cucumber is a berry, no one really believes this, states usually classify tomatoes as fruit, but in practice use it. Okay, very calm, very good. However, I suspect you might fall into the trap of uh, talking your way out of things. There was clearly a contradiction there, and you just made something up on the spot. It's perfect for this exercise, uh, but be mindful of not doing it in the real thing. You have a very deliberate speech pattern when you're presenting, not when you're speaking normally. So you actually change your speech style when you're presenting. It might come across as if you are condescending to the court. So I know so much more than you idiot sitting there. Be very careful. So your normal speech, you're friendly, happy, everything perfect. When you stand up, you then suddenly become very deliberate. Fruit is tomato. If you don't agree with me, you should die. <laughs> so just a little bit more friendly is probably the advice. In answering questions. Okay, um, how would you suggest I can not 
talk, try to talk my way out of things, but say Look, the, but the way you're speaking right now is how you should speak when you're presenting, not when you were just speaking. This is exactly what's going to avoid that uh, condescension. Um, how do you avoid bullshitting your way out? By knowing the, the information. In this exercise, you're making stuff up, so it's perfect. You wouldn't have thought every possibility through. But in the real exercise of Jessup, just make sure you don't have bad arguments, that you don't have to bullshit. I would also like to point out that I did not make up the case because it was part of the facts of the case that I did make up before ah. I presented. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Valeria Zdanova and uh, I'm studying uh, law at Yaroslav Zivais National L Law University. So, uh, to d uh, so now I will uh, talk to you about uh, why I decided uh, to choose uh, jurisprudence and uh, why I decided to, uh, especially uh, this university. Uh, as to the first part, uh, my uh, father, sister and my uncle are lawyers. Uh, so, uh, even in the childhood, when I was a little child, I uh, told uh, a great amount of stories uh, how it is interesting to be a lawyer because you can uh, make a difference for other people. You can uh, help them to resolve their uh, problems. Uh, as to the second part, uh, why I decided to uh, exit my university is also all my uh, relatives. Uh, now I uh, re realized uh, how. Uh, uh, now I realized uh, that uh, uh, they were right because uh, I have uh, really high qualified teachers. Um, I'll be brief with my comments as well. Slow down. You are nervous. Just calm yourself. You have great style. You have great smile. Um, but you clearly were trying to just say, I'm going to finish this, I'm not going to run away. So as a result, you also spoke for, for about 45 seconds before you just completely finished. Um, just calm down, little by little, and that's all you need. Hello everyone, my name is Dmitry Anastasia, and today I'd like to tell you uh, about uh, European Law Student Association. Um, I think uh, this topic is uh, very interesting for each of us uh, because uh, all of us are law students and uh, ELSA is uh, the, org the organization that unites uh, law students and young lawyers uh, around the world. Yes, uh, firstly I, uh, I'd like to tell you about my experience uh, in ELSA and then uh, I'd like to uh, tell you about uh, opportunities uh, that ELSA gives. Um, Half a year ago, I um, was um, uh, I was trying to uh, get the position of uh, director of marketing in Elsa Harkiv, and uh, I was chosen. Um, then I th I thought that it was uh, it wasn't a good decision because uh, because at that time it took me a very long time to prepare to prepare some materials and to do some work. Yes, but now. Um, I understand uh, that it was uh, like the best decision uh, which I could uh, could ever made. Um, by the way, uh, I can mention that now I have uh, I have been chosen uh, to be a vice president for marketing for the next year. Yes. Um, then uh, I like to tell you about uh, opportunities that Elsa gives uh, for students. Uh, first of all, uh, you can uh, get internship. Uh, you can. Uh, uh, get um, uh, don't remember. <laughs> okay, uh, you can uh, take part in uh, uh, conferences in uh, mood course. Uh, by the way, uh, the case we are going to present tomorrow uh, was uh, written uh, to European uh, Human uh, Human Rights mood, co mood Courts, which organized by Elsa. Uh, so, to sum up, I'd like to tell you, uh, join Elsa, be active. Thank you for your attention. You were going so fast that you didn't have time to swallow. So you suddenly go, no, no, no. <laughs> Slow down. What's the rush? Again, you're looking up there at the heavens for inspiration. I don't know why. Look down at the lowly humans who are sitting in front of you. Um, and again, you, you kind of are dancing on the spot almost. <laughs> There's so much happening. You're going fast, dancing. 
if you can calm yourself down and slow down, again, you have the basics of being a good organist, but you just need to compose yourself. Good luck. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Baribina Jana, and um, uh, I want to tell you about up to day news. Uh, it, I think uh, it connects us both as lawyers and as football fans. Uh, as we know, now it is held in uh, Euro 2016, and um, it is related uh, to this, and I hope it uh, will be informative for everyone. Yesterday, uh, Messi was um, sentenced. Uh, to pay uh, 2 million uh, euros as a fine and um, his father uh, 1 million euros. And um, uh, what um, actually he thinks about this case, it, he said, I was playing just football and uh, I trusted in everything uh, on my um, father, on my father and on my lawyers, and I didn't uh, uh, think about anything. And during the case hearing, uh, he also said, uh, said that um, uh, he had, hadn't suspected uh, any wrongdoings uh, when his father brought to him uh, some documents, contracts to sign. Uh, but uh, now, they, uh, now they have a chance uh, to appeal their sentence uh, in uh, the Supreme Court. Thank you. Again, when you start the nerves are there, and the arms are there. Pause, gather yourself. No need to apologize. Having to think about a word or having to look at your notes, that's no reason to apologize. Just look down and then come back with the answer. It's almost as bad as saying, um, um. No, just look down, okay. answer. Um, where are you looking? Again, you're looking up there somewhere, and I couldn't figure out what it is that is gathering your thoughts. Your presentation is fantastic, in part because, again, like the agent sitting right next to me, you're very likable. You're warm and friendly. Thank you. But you just need to calm down. Mm -hmm. And when you come up with an answer, don't say, oh yes, there's also this thing. <laughs> Compose yourself, say, there, additionally, there is this point. So, again, maintain that level of formality. So, your niceties are fantastic and they help you, but don't forget the formality and the, the fact that you're the agent representing someone else. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that.